Welcome back. We continue with this train celebrating women here on Good Morning Kenya. In as much as we did mark the International Day for Women yesterday, we always do it here on Good Morning Kenya with our Women at the Forefront segment. And now we move on, on to the next part, still Women at the Forefront. And now we have the pleasure of having with us Rukia Sabit, who is the co-founder and executive director at Sunflower Trust. Good morning, Rukia. Good morning, Jane. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Are you on the social platform? Yes. How I can am. our viewers interact with you? Well, in all social platforms, I'm Rukia Sebit. Rukia Sebit. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Fantastic. Yeah. Remember, you can also talk to us. Use the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Our official station handle is at KBC Channel One. My handle is at Jane Womboy. Now, yesterday was International Women's Day, yes. and you know the theme around that day was gender equality for all. Today to achieve a better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for you on a very individual basis before we get into this conversation today? Well, what it means to me is that, um, you know, leave no one behind, mm. basically. So, you know, uh, the less privilege they had to reach, yeah. they all need to be held hands and we work with them to wherever we are going. That includes both young girls and boys. Absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, remember, this is something that, w once again, we just keep echoing conversations around gender equality. It's not about women. It is about both genders coming to the table together and making sure that each one gets the same opportunity. A better today. For. Let's work on today for a better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now let's come back to today's conversation and we have just understood that you are one of the founders and executive director at Sunflower Trust. Yes. Tell us a bit about Sunflower Trust. So Sunflower Trust is a literacy and leadership program that mm -hmm. targets uh, the low performing girls from different private informal schools. Yes. And uh, the, what I mean by private informal schools is not the private elite because we have the private elite, then we have public, we have the private which is just private but mm -hmm. still parents can afford and then we have this private informal these are schools which don't have enough resources you yes. might actually find that um, you have one class having a room having two different classes so those are the kind of schools that we work with and uh, we target girls between the ages of 10 to 15 years uh, who are low performing so we do an assessment basically we look at vocabulary comprehension reading and uh, we pick the ones who perform below mm -hmm. to into our program so we have a literacy lab as we call it in yes. Kibera and what happens is that we onboard these girls in grade 5 and we work with them till they get to grade 8 so apart from us wanting them to improve on their academics we're looking at transforming them to be leaders in their own species mm -hmm. because uh, remember Remember one challenge that they're already facing is that they are low performing so they might not really be lawyers or doctors but um, they don't actually, have the same competitive chances yes but they've actually proven us strong yeah. because the ones we whom we actually onboarded in grade 5 that is in 2018 mm -hmm. are currently today sitting for their grade 8 and we're looking at some of them actually being uh, jo uh, able to join national school because oh, wow. yeah they've really transformed from low performing to now being the top of their Excellent class performers. yeah yeah exactly what, what was the background in putting together this organization when you set st started it up and you can also tell us the year that you founded this particular organization so sunflower was founded in 2017 mm -hmm. so it started as um open community library so me together with my co-founder we actually mobilized for books from our friends from our own yes. and we started a community library but we figured out we figured out like on the register girls were missing you know they were not consistent boys would come during the holidays we will actually record boys coming in monday to friday but a girl will come today late two days later mm -hmm. they don't show up and following up the reason was I was held up, you know, I was uh, in charge of my siblings. I could not come to Sunflower. So we deliberately sat down and, okay, thought we need to measure the impact yes. and mapped out schools. Then we realized this, these kind of schools, then that's how Sunflower started basically and also research says um, a, a child actually starts thinking about dropping out of school in class five mm. if they are to drop out in grade seven that is if they don't understand anything in school mm -hmm. yes. and how has your personal background you know growing up your journey getting to where you are today contributed to this path that you chose to take on with sunflower trust well i have been uh, 
born and bred in Kibera. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, I, when I work with these girls, it, I, I see myself 10, you know, 10 year old me in them. So nothing is new in terms of the challenges that I saw myself facing yeah. in terms of supporting uh, education wise, you know, there was minimal support. So, um, you know, I was working, I was privileged enough to actually go through a vocational training and I managed to get an opportunity. Then I was working with a uh, youth for employment in ICT. And the, one of the gaps was uh, girls really had the same problem that you're talking about, self-esteem, you know, getting into the unnecessary relationships mm. at that level. So I thought, let me go back a step a step backward yes. and take this as a challenge. Maybe if these girls are empowered at a younger age, then they will be able to cope in, in this, you know, ruthless this environment. Because it's very, it's yeah. very ruthless, you know, yeah. it doesn't favor anyone. Because you need to compete with everyone. It doesn't look at the challenges that you're facing. So mm -hmm. actually looking at that and that experience of linking the girls to employment and also where I am from, that's what made me like go back. Awesome. Yeah. And you chose to go the ICT way and we, you know, from what we have seen as a country, um, ICT space, we don't find so many women in this particular space in as much as times are changing, we are seeing more and more women gravitating towards the ICT space, um, the STEM related courses and all. But why were you particular on choosing to go the ICT way with these young girls? Well, um, I'd say that was a coincidence because I, I, I never looked at uh, myself being in the ICT field or education per se, but um, when I cleared high school, then <coughs> Opportunities were, opportunities were very minimal, you know. Mm. You clear high school and that was the end of the road. No more, no further education. Then ICT opportunity came. There was a vocational uh, training called Nairobi. So they were just recruiting youth within the informal settlements mm. to train them in ICT. And that's how, for me, that was my turnaround point because I got selected. I went through the training. I was the best student. Then the same, same um, organization, you know, after linking me up to employment, took me back to go and set up uh, same schools, the BIT schools in different uh, East African countries in, Ke in Uganda, Tanzania and Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. So that actually, you know, gave me that DNA for ICT. So right now, um, um, of course, with edu without education, there's nothing someone can do. So for me, first, we value education and then now technology is one of the things that we also instill in these girls so that they, they're able to speak up, to speak to the world, you know, mm. yeah. Now, you've mentioned that you were able to visit other countries and, you know, interact with the same age group and the same population, especially looking at girls and the younger population. Um, comparing with Tanzania and Uganda, which are the countries that you were able to, you know, interact with these young girls, what are some of the differences or similarities did you see between the Kenyan youth and especially in the area that you had already interacted with and these ones in these two other countries? I'd say like uh, I've seen similarities because um, one in the, all those countries I've worked with um, urban youth and children, uh, urban slums youth and children. So they were all coming from the informal settlements. You know, these are kids whom children whom we you actually think because they are in an urban setup, so they have so much exposure. They have uh, a lot of things that they actually uh, can uh, get to, but. Unfortunately, these are the most hard to reach because they are most, they're most vulnerable. One, talk about sex, sexual exploitation. You know, they have so much content in the media that no one is actually trying to control. So they have that. They have um, so much access to uh, books and everything, but if not controlled, then mm -hmm. it goes the negative way. So for me, I'm looking at... Uh, Ki children who are getting into puberty already that's vulnerability yeah. number two look at girls you know it goes without saying we we have look at the stats look during covid i mean so many girls got pregnant they were they are now out of schools why because they are the most vulnerable because where they are coming from again look at education who is supporting their education system almost no one so 
for me, there's a similarity between all those youth and kids coming from the informal settlements. Now, looking still at this population and all the three countries, you know, putting them in comparison to each other, what then do you think the role of the parents of these kids, if they are alive, can play or have played that could help change the narrative of these children? How can they be involved? Um, or have they been involved? One, uh, my experience with Sunflower is that at, at the beginning, uh, the involvement of parents were very, was very minimal because, I, I mean, parents are hustling. You know, if someone, for example, is a guard, they leave the house before 6 a.m., they have to come back after 7 p.m., at what time do they sit down with their children? So mm -hmm. we intentionally um, put our work into that and made sure that every month a parent needs to create time and come and look at their progress of the child, which has really worked well in terms of just following up on the progress and also telling us on the improvement in terms of behavioral change. And that, like, uh, we really need to push parents to be involved, it goes without saying. And that is basically what also CBC is currently doing mm -hmm. in the new curriculum. Yes. It's a triangle. So it has the parent, the child, and the teacher. So there's no way we are going to miss out on having the parent being involved otherwise we lose the child absolutely yeah. and just looking at um, the particular bits that you have mentioned that the programs that are being set up in these different countries in kenya we, you said we had the yeah, Nairobi. yes we have the um, in tanzania there's the zanzi bits and in T uh, uganda we have the Kampa bits yes. tell us a bit about these programs so these are youth uh, for em employment mm -hmm. uh, programs that uh, actually use ict as a tool to basically empower the youth and make them ready for employment. So it trains them basic ICT to professional programmers and graphic designers. Then it links them to different opportunities, uh, employment opportunities within the different countries. So what the organization does is that it partners with a different um, potential employers. Mm -hmm. Then um, when the time comes af after the but the youth goes through the program for one year, then it links them to the different employers. Mm -hmm. Basically, what they're doing is just a stepping stone for changing lives of the youth within the informal settlements. And what impact has it brought for the period of time that it has been in, um, in use and being used by this particular youth when they're put out there? What has been the return on investments, quote unquote, that you guys have seen from this particular program? Well, um, the return on, on investment is the change. Mm -hmm. Basically, having um, you know, find, getting someone who has, who already lost hope in life because, you know, after secondary, if you don't have any college uh, degree, no one will take you in. But having, being linked to employment mm. and changing lives within your community, that is now the return on, the biggest return on investment. And uh, for Nairobi, it has done that for more than 10 youth, 10,000 youth oh, wow. yeah, in Nairobi alone. So, yeah. yeah, so that is what, that is the smile. I mean, for someone like me, because of Nairobi, that's why I'm here. Mm. If it were not for Nairobi, I don't know where, where I would have been. You're a true testament of this yeah. particular program. Yeah. Now, in all this, you know, you being part of the Sunflower organization, working with the different uh, youths and the different organizations that come together, I'm sure it hasn't just always been a smooth journey, you know, out in the sunshine, smiling through and through. What are some of the challenges that you have encountered that continue to still prove to be a problem, but you have to deal with over and over and over again? Um, of course, uh, coming with a new, unique intervention is always a problem because um, you fight for that space. Mm. You fight for the space to belong, to be accepted, for people to adapt because uh, we are coming in with uh, improving quality education. You know, education is already there, so why do we need you? I mean, it has been a challenge to just sell in the idea, but uh, luckily the schools that we've worked with, they've seen the impact and mm -hmm. they've really bought into that idea. They are actually pushing us to a new challenge of having a bigger space and uh, target getting more children yes. so that is now the main challenge that we are facing and is that part of you know the prod, uh, the plans that you have in the near exactly. future exactly it goes without saying that we need to really expand mm. um, within uh, other other uh, nairobi slums but also even outside Nairobi County. So that's already a plan that we are working on and mm -hmm. in the next five years I believe uh, we'll be talking 
something about something else. Beautiful. Yeah. So that has been the, one of the main challenges that you have been facing yes. in terms of the expansion capabilities. Yes. All right. Yeah. Now, bringing in the role of the government and, you know, considering you need an environment that would allow you to actually work and deliver on the plans that you have for these particular children, would you say we have an enabling environment that allows you as an individual and your organization and even these programs to thrive? Um, right now, with the new curriculum, I'd say yes, yes. because um, it looks beyond um, just the normal academics, but also what else can these children do? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you need co-curricular activities to improve the quality of education, and basically that is what Sunflower does. Yes. We, we have a few uh, children who go to the public school who mm -hmm. are in the program, and we can see that. So one of our uh, main... Um, agenda especially for next year is now to go into the government uh, public schools yes. just to have our program as to start off as clubs mm -hmm. just the, as the co-curricular activities to have the literacy and leadership program there and uh, yeah there's an enabling environment for that all right yeah. now in as much as you're also doing the best that you can with these kids in the um, the spaces that you have reserved for them these kids also still go back to interact with their care uh, givers and their guardians and they can also be part of the journey to help it progress further or regress. How then, let me just take you back to the role of the parents and guardians yes. in this conversation, just creating, spilling over the awareness to them to actually help reinforce these children in this journey. How can they be brought on board in a way that they feel Yeah, um, so what needs to happen is um, a lot of capacity building, because mm -hmm. remember we are transiting from our traditional way of thinking yes. in terms of, I take a child to school then I leave it to the teachers, but here we are right now parents need to be involved so um, with teachers they need to be a lot of uh, capacity building to parents mm. for them to understand they are the caregivers and this is their role in this triangle yes yeah so it needs to be a continuous thing until we actually get to transit wholly into that process mm -hmm. and that is exactly what sunflower does like we have Every month we have a parental engagement forum where now parents come together and if you don't have time we will definitely come later but we really need to understand what is happening also to the girls at home because mm. we're not only talking about academics yeah. but also their behavioral general behavioral change life is full circle yeah now this brings me to the next aspect in terms of the facilitation that you also require to just make this journey also um, all the more beneficial to these children um, I'm sure you have your own uh, ideas of what you need in terms of the facilities the resources the equipment and all that but maybe somebody could be watching us today and they want to be part of this course what forms of assistance do you feel are necessary to these programs that you're trying to bring um, and grow um, one is definitely funding yeah <laughs> yeah we, we definitely need funding to expand you know to be able to hire more staff who can actually deliver you know in a broader way but uh, we also need books because uh, we run a literacy program so it, that cannot be done without books so we need both fictional and academic books uh, we have a, a literacy lab where now we give the, ch the children space to do their homework and most of them don't have resources that is between class grade 5 and mm -hmm. uh, class 8 so we have to provide that so I mean assistance with books will be helpful we also need um, you know people with different um, professionals and uh, expertise, people who will actually human take us, resource. human yeah. resource, people who can maybe volunteer their time for just to, to be able to take us to the next level. And uh, this is in organizational development, in training. We need that. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, before we actually get to move further on into this conversation, I want to talk a bit about the recognition that came your way yeah. with Zuri Awaz. Congratulations, thank by the you, way. But well, for you. the benefit of our viewer, tell us a bit about um, Zuri Awards, a condensed version okay. of what Zuri Awards are all about. OK. Um, so Zuri Awards, it's an annual uh, platform that recognizes uh, recognize and appreciates uh, unsung heroes, mm -hmm. women unsung heroes in a, who are doing exceptional work in their different communities. So um, like this year, there were 15 different categories uh, from education, innovation, STEM, agribusiness, agri business, manufacturing, name them. Um, so yeah, they Apply, they actually advertise for applications, mm -hmm. for nominations, and this was done, I think, from December to sometime in January. And um, 
I understand more than two, they received more than 250 applicants around Kenya. So out of the 250, uh, around 45 were nominated. And I was one of the nominees mm. who actually went through a series of interviews and trainings. And yeah, on 4th of uh, March, they announced the winners, and I was uh, the winner for, uh, the, in the education category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did it feel to be recognized for this work that you have thrown yourself wholly into? You have gone through a, this whole gruesome uh, interviewing process and finally getting to win this award. Um, I know it was, uh, it was confusing. It was confusing because I, I totally was not expecting. I thought the other ladies also w had exceptional work. Yes. But again, uh, sitting down thinking, um, it's a matter of recognition and appreciation. So it's um, good that someone else has actually seen what Sunflower does mm -hmm. and recognized that, you know, through my words and also maybe just uh, through a bit of verification process. And yeah, it, me it gives me a bit of uh, confidence in now dealing with us. Uh, sunflower because yes. yeah I see things are happening and uh, what we are doing is actually is actually authentic mm -hmm. and needed in the community and do you think this is one of those uh, more of those stepping stones that we need to encourage more women to stand out in the spaces that they are in thank you so yeah we I know we have a lot of a lot of women have uh, uh, startups and sometimes you give up because you think people don't believe in you, mm. you know, because you don't, you don't get that appreciation. But so long as you, what you're doing is right and you're doing it in the right way, keep on doing it. Do, keep on doing it and work with people. You never know. Absolutely. Yeah. And also now, given that you are in the ICT space, we also need to change the narrative around the ICT space and women. Um, arguably, so there have been concerns around harassment uh, of women in these spaces. That's one of the reasons as to why the industry is dominated biased opinions when it comes to the positions in this particular environment how then can we encourage more women to redirect their attention in the ict space and the stem related courses um i think we just need to take up everything put that fear aside yes. and i mean if if you're capable if you feel like you're cop capable of doing something mm -hmm. please do it and if you're not get a mentor get a you know look up to role models who are there already doing reach out to them mm -hmm. and you know things will happen yeah i know it's it's quite a rough space because uh, men have dominated not in a bad way but i mean we need to find our space we need to find our space there by deliberately putting ourselves there all right yeah now before we get to uh, close this conversation we welcome your thoughts in regards to this discussion the hashtag that we are using is good morning kenya on twitter our official station handle ever remains to be at kbc channel one my handle is at jane on boy i have davy who is asking what about the boys in um the same kibera slums that you have mentioned are there any programs that target them and how can we also contribute to helping them elevate their lives thank you so as I said we have a literacy and leadership program mm -hmm. and uh, I mean as much as we talk about women empowerment girls empowerment every day we also need to be able to prepare boys yes who are going to deal with them in the future so for us um, Apart from girls coming to the literacy program, we also go to schools. So we work with 11 schools that we actually uh, check them through gender equity pro programs and mm -hmm. our leadership program. So this is our, we have a 24 week curriculum on which we actually showcase um, stories of uh, girls from seven different countries all over the world yes. and these are you know these are challenges that we also also maybe are facing here like homelessness you mm. know um child labor we all have we have it here and we get the boys also to tell us how they can relate to this and um with the one year that we've implemented that program in schools grade uh, boys in grade six actually can uh, testify that they've seen these challenges mm -hmm. among girls and now they feel that they are ready and they will treat their sisters and friends mm -hmm. better, you know, because they actually see it and we involve them in that program. So tell us, what do you know about child labor? Mm -hmm. And they tell us, so they actually already can resonate to what is happening. So our life skills and leadership program is extended to schools and both to boys and girls. All right. Yeah. Now there's Cynthia who's asking, do you have the same program in other counties in uh, Kenya, not just Nairobi, focusing on Kibera? Uh, not yet, mm -hmm. but we are open to that. 
we are open to that, to that and it is part of our uh, next strategic plan. In the next five years, we want to go beyond Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So we are open for partnership. All right. Now, uh, this one is a very long one. <laughs> I'll go through it in just a bit. Let me quickly get another one. This is Michael, um, appreciating the conversation, asking how you guys can be found on social media. Is there a social media handle for this particular yeah. organization? Sunflower Trust. Sunflower Trust. Facebook is mm -hmm. Sunflower Global 17. Twitter, Sunflower underscore Trust. Instagram, sunflower.trust. All right. Yeah. So you can be able to reach out to them through those, uh, those handles and inquire. Yeah. If you have any more questions or inquiries into this particular discussion, you can do so in uh, using those social handles. Now, as we get to um, receive more feedback, looking at um, all the other women that are hoping to come together and create such spaces and they're looking to the county governments and especially now that we have both levels of government, how do you feel the county government can actually be involved more in order to, in the long run, we can also rope in the national government? Um, I, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can't, you know, put a proposal on the table and want the county government or national government to do everything. So mm -hmm. what are you doing in where you are? So at, by the time you even approaching and uh, you've actually seen the need of bringing them in, you must have something that you're putting on, tab on mm -hmm. the table. So yes. let us start something and then we work with them as public-private partnerships. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, Mark Trunk, ready official is asking in terms of mentorship what are you doing in those areas mentorship do you have mentors who come on board and talk to these young girls and even the boys yes um, one thing that we are really thriving and leveraging on is, um, you know, people have been there. We have a lot of people who have been in Kibera slums and they've succeeded. Mm. So there's nothing that we are really reinventing, but we are really, we are, what we are doing is just trying to kill the, you know, um, from the slums and stuff. So That pity party narrative. Exactly. So we link, we, we, ha we bring on board mentors. We have different high schools that we work with, and these are posh high schools that now mentor the girls for them to know that, you know, everything is possible. We have people who have been in Kibera and have really prospered. We bring them back to talk to the girls, mm. you know, just to share their journey so that they know, oh, so I can also be there. Someone has if been here before. Yeah, someone to motivate them. So that happens a lot. All right. It goes now, without saying. Another area that... Um, is important for these young kids is about um, sexual health and reproductive rights. You know, the past two years have clearly shown us how children are vulnerable, yeah. how the perpetrators are right within the spaces that they consider safe. Now, in terms of empowering them and equip, uh, equipping them with this information that they need to understand their sexuality, of course, based on their ages, how are you going about it as an organization and it being part of the program? Yes. So. Um as I said, you know, this age group is very, is, is very, very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Looking at sexual exploitation, they're living in under poverty situation. So there are a lot of things that come with that. And um, sexual reproductive health is one of the things that we look at. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at um, comprehensive sexuality education, just taking them through that. We also bring in uh, different um, players like uh, gender-based violence players because they go through these things. You cannot really separate that from a girl who is mm -hmm. being brought up in a slum. So they go through that and uh, sexual reproductive health is one of our key components of actually b uh, transforming them to be leaders. So we talk about them, we bring people to talk about them, mm -hmm. we do give them uh, like a you know, support, any kind of support that they need. If they need um, to talk to someone in terms of things that are happening at home, we definitely link them. All right. Yeah. With some of the specialists that exactly. they need, especially those that maybe could have um, undergone some traumatic experiences and they do not know how to go about talking uh, when it comes to these matters. Yeah. Now, looking at the long-term plans that you have with Sunflower Trust, alongside these uh, programs that you are running with Nairo Bids, uh, Zanzi Bids, and Kampa Bids, what are the future plans that you feel are already in the works and you know the impact that you want to leave behind the legacy that you want to leave behind with sunflower trust when it comes to the ict space and these young girls for me i want to just change lives what i want to see is um especially the girls who go through sunflower mm -hmm. to be different people we have girls who you know when they come in they have to tell us you know about their background and what they aspire to be others were like i don't see myself going anywhere after grade eight 
because in my you know in my house in my household no one has actually gone beyond grade eight mm -hmm. so for me getting that girl into secondary that is what i want to see and uh, that is already happening because now they have bigger dreams they already can say i want to be a doctor i mean it was not happening what do you want to be i'm not even sure because i don't see any support my parents cannot afford my secondary mm. education so for me just getting them through education and being able to make decisions send decisions in future that is what I want to see for Sunflower. That is the end goal. Yeah. Now, there's a question that has come in here, and I'm trying to paraphrase it or rephrase it, but it is based on a religious sensationalization among the kids that also disadvantage them from such opportunities. Is this something that you have encountered? And if so, how have you dealt with it? Um, yes, we have. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what we have done is that uh, for Sunflower, it's an after-school program, so the kids are there between 4.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. during weekdays and on Saturdays the whole day. Yes. So at least we have time to maneuver around that. Then during the holidays, it's there full time from um, Monday to Saturday. Again, I, I know children need to go to madrasas, they need go to go to church on Saturdays, but also um, during that time a lot of things happen. Mm. A lot of things that parents are not in control of, you know, and we've seen children say that they're going to church, they don't get to church. So for us, Sunflower is a safe space. It, is, it might not be a religious space, but it is a safe space mm -hmm. where we know and parents can actually account for my child from this time to this time was at Sunflower and we have that data. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now that we are also in this election period, it's also a time where we see so many um, politicians going around making promises to these young kids, and especially in the um, informal settlements, yeah. they make promises, they give them little money here and there. And once they expose these kids to some of these um, environments, the kids now get carried away. They want to be part of the campaigns, and they lose track of what they had gained so far. Yeah. How are you guys just? putting plans in place to ensure that these kids are not carried away by the politicking that will be happening because at the end of the day, they also want to have a meal a day. They yeah. want to help their parents here and there. And there's a politician over there telling them, Kuja, I'll give you a few hundreds. And they don't, maybe don't have another alternative. What we've done is um, actually we, we, target, we look at leadership in a very broad way. Mm -hmm. we, because um, one of the things is, um, you know, we know they are living in a very sensitive, a political, a sensitive political area. Yeah. So we also engage them in internal politics and the, you know, advantages and disadvantages. So we have leaders within the space. Mm -hmm. So during uh, the beginning of every year, they get to come up with their own manifestos. These are the girls, they come up with their manifestos and they actually um, do nominations or primaries and then now vote for the they elect the leaders in different areas because for us we do principles so yes. we have uh, principles called lead which means love education action and discipline mm -hmm. so everything that they do it needs to actually run around you need to show love there's no fight you need to stop conflict you need to uphold education as a value so you need to do your homework in time you need to show others how to read and write you need to uh, live in positive action. If you find stuff thrown everywhere, you need to be the one who's, who's responsible to arrange them, which includes at home. You need to be disciplined, and that is doing the right thing at the right time in mm -hmm. the right manner. So um, that has really matured them, I'd put it that way, because every day they need to report on that we have a lead check-in so they need to report every single day every single day oh, wow. so they need to report like um so what has happened in your life in the in the last 24 hours accountability yes on, one. on lead <laughs> it might not be at sunflower but even at home yes and they will tell us simple things as i helped my siblings to do their homework i mean that is education mm. yeah so it's it's not a one night thing but it's a walk 
that we are working with them. So by the time it comes to now people convincing them to join this, to do this, they already can make their own decisions. Yes, yes. they're already empowered enough to do that. Yes. Now, as we bring this conversation to a close, at the center of this whole conversation, we have the Office of the Woman Rep. Yes. And this office could go a long way in helping with this program, with the other programs that you're also running with Sunflower Trust. Just very briefly, there is your camera. What would you want the women rep, uh, woman rep that is currently in office and even the next one that will be coming in to understand and how they can actually be part of this conversation? Yeah, as the woman rep who actually, you know, works with the whole county. Mm. Nairobi County to Nairobi be specific. County to be specific. Mm. I believe um, we can actually work together in terms of growth of sunflower and just taking sunflower to the different um, constituencies in Nairobi. Right now we're in Kibera, but we look at expanding this after school program in the, in the different constituencies. So um, that is what I would really want us to work together on. Yeah, to identify different partners who can actually do this in other areas. Absolutely. Yeah. And finally, maybe your call to action message to everyone who is watching us today when it comes to empowerment of our children from a very young age. Um, Education is not only about academics. There are other things that actually build up on our education because we want uh, these, our children later to be able to make decisions and to contribute positively to the world. So let us... Um, you know, support the after school programs and I there are different after school programs that are provided in different areas so let us support the after school programs to be able to have send leaders tomorrow because I believe um, if children are ha if children have different skills then they are able to make decisions in future beautiful mm -hmm. that brings us to a close of this conversation remember this has been women at the forefront all about empowering our young girls to know that they're women who have gone ahead of you they have broken that glass ceiling and so can you we have been speaking with Rukia Sabit who is the co-founder and executive director at Sunflower Trust remind us the social handles once more both individual um, and for the trust so individual is Rukia Sabit in all the social platforms apart from TikTok I'm not in TikTok <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, for Sunflower is uh, for Facebook, Sunflower Global 17. Uh, for Twitter, Sunflower underscore trust. For Instagram, Sunflower dot trust. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for making time to be with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, as we bring the program to a close, just to let you know that in not too long, we'll be bringing you live feed from the State House, where His Excellency President Kenyatta, in the company of the First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, will be receiving the President and First Lady of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Emerson Mnagangwa, and his wife, Auxilia Mnagangwa, who will be in the country for a three-day state visit. So that will be coming up in a bit. But for now, it is goodbye. See you tomorrow. I'm Jane Boy.